David, can you briefly introduce WorldNet International and your role within the company for us? Absolutely. So, uh, WorldNet International is a privately held logistics company based in the US and EU. Uh, we have approximately 250 employees globally. Um, we, we, we handle shipments for high-profile events like the Oscars or the, the, the Golden Globes. Um, so those stars that are wearing those, those garments or those suits, it's, there's a high chance that we actually ship those garments. Uh, we, we service the, the fashion and tech, tech sectors. Um, we just like any other logistics company, we move a, ship, a package from point A to point B, but what's the differentiator, differentiator is that the value of the shipments are, is pretty high, and there's a time critical component to the shipments, which the normal integrators can't, can't achieve. Um, we literally put people on the airplanes with the shipments to meet, meet the deadlines. Um, my role, I've been with the company for several years. Um, I, I basically manage the, the strategic portfolio of the company, and I'm tasked to source advanced technologies to support the, the operations and customer service. Awesome. Give them some examples of the stars and events that you were talking about. Um, stars, Beyonce. Uh, that's the biggest star, depending on your perspective. Um, Dua Lipa, to name a few. So, so we we pretty our clientele's pretty demanding, um, and and there's there's absolutely zero margin of error when it comes to these these shipments. So David, what prompted you to reach out to Soroko initially? Tell us how the whole journey started. So we, we actually developed an in-house operation system to manage, manage our, our shipments, a, a transport management system. And what we discovered was that the system wasn't being utilized as we expected. Um, the biggest question that really popped in, in, in our minds were like, what are the users doing? Um, what, what are the drivers for the underutilization of the system? So uh, we've, we reached out to Soroka um, because you guys are the experts with the, the interaction data and you are able to, to help us identify the trends and the bottlenecks that we, 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 we were so desperate to find out. Awesome. And how did Soroka help you with this, this problem? So, it was mentioned earlier, you heard the word Scout, Work Graph. Um, Sirocco allowed us to deploy Scout um, in our environment, which gathered that interaction data. Um, and that was pretty seamless and really quick. We were, ap we were actually able to get uh, the, the, the visualizations in Work Graph within weeks. And what it identified was there, there, there were all these these interactions that were occurring that we had no idea that it was occurring. Even if we interviewed the staff, they, they didn't tell us what they were actually really doing. So it was similar to the dark side, discovering the dark side of the moon, as you mentioned, and seeing, seeing that interactive data was like a real eye-opener. Um, at the same time, it was pretty empowering because we kind of removed our dependency on that, that feedback from, from the frontline staff. Um, and what, what recommendations Soroka actually gave us was that our user interface wasn't intuitive enough. It was actually too complex in certain cases, and it was missing key functionality that existed in other applications. So, through that, we, we, we obviously redesigned the user interface, we ported functionality across to, to, to the system, and the outcome was that we were able to drive uh, utilization and increase it by 16%, which was amazing. Oh, terrific. David, tell us about some challenges that you encountered in the journey. Yeah, so the biggest challenge that we we faced was really the 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 
the accountability on the business side in terms of translating the recommendations and insights from Soroka to, to taking action on those, those recommendations. Um, what we really realized was that data wasn't sufficient. We really had to come up with a way on how to, to get the teams to, to action the recommendations and, and what we, the approach that we were using wasn't, wasn't uh, up to par. So we, we really had to pivot and look at potentially creating a more structured approach on, on the execution of these recommendations. Um, but not only structured, but actually really with the driver of, of governance behind it in order to, 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 to move these, these, uh, these recommendations. So talk to, about, talk, talk to us about this governance model that you talked about. How did you build this? How did you get all the moving pieces together? So we had fragments of the govern governance model. So if you look at governance, there's five pillars of governance. Um, there's, there's the strategy side of it. There's the risk management side of it. Um, there's resource allocation, performance, performance management, and then finally the value. And when we were looking at their interaction data through these, 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 these lenses, what was identified was that we could actually see how we can incorporate this interactive data in our existing strategic model, or do we have to create a new, new, new strategies, or do we have to spin up a new, new program? Just, just having it stand alone as a, as a program by itself wasn't, wasn't sufficient. So what we ended up doing was we, we identified through the interac interaction data that there was there was a number of recommendations around AI and, and automation. And we actually grouped that together as, as a strategy by itself and actually fit it under a, an existing strategy, the business transformation strategy. So we have a dedicated AI strategy that was, was created, which we started to get movement on. Um, and then secondly, we, we we, we looked at, can we look at the existing programs within the company and piggyback off on that? And there was, there was a program by the, the operations department in order to drive efficiency. And we said, hey, there's this recommendation from scouts. You could shift work, workload from your, your communications layer to your operation, operations layer, and you'll, you'll, you'll get like a 20% efficiency gain here. And they said, Heck yeah, let's 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 do that, and we were able to 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 gain those efficiencies by leveraging uh, existing structures that we have. Wonderful. So, how did this integrated approach influence your overall strategy development? The, the biggest influence is that we could actually map the the recommendations and initiatives that, that Soraka was providing to our internal business objectives. That's, 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 that's the biggest, that, that's the biggest uh, influence. By doing that, we could show to the internal users and other business units um, the impact of these recommendations. Uh, and, and also at the same time, uh, look at how our existing strategic portfolio is going to, it, it actually changed, it, it, it morphed and it, it was very trans transformative because it, it basically, uh, we added additional strategies, we reworked some strategies. Um, no, brilliant. So last question, David. Um, talk to us about how you're using interaction data in AI to drive application portfolio rationalization and simplifying your technology landscape? So APM, uh, Application Portfolio Management, um, we've 
in, in, in our view, it actually falls under an existing strategy that we had. So with their interaction data that we're getting from, uh, from Scout, and we can actually view the usage, the usage within WorkRAF. We can see which are our high usage applications, which are our low usage applications. Through that data, we can actually make recommendations to the business units, saying, listen here, you, there's an opportunity for, for you to consolidate an application based on usage, or even retire an application. And at the, at the end of the day, we, we've been able to decrease our, whole, our application, our APM footprint by, by 2%, which is pretty good. Because at the end of the day, we actually have 370 applications. We have more applications than staff members. <laughs> yeah. Couple of more questions. What specific benefits have you seen from, from using the Scout work graph across the board? The biggest benefit is that we do have real-time visibility on the process. That's the biggest, the biggest thing. Because of that real-time visibility, there's, there's, it's increased the velocity in decision-making, um, design, um, approvals. Um, and, and the second biggest, biggest aspect of, of WorkGraph is actually the, the visual capabilities of it. Um, as mentioned, I, I work with a lot of non-English speaking users. So there's, there's, to a certain degree, a loss gets, gets lost in translation. So when you can go to a non-English speaking person and, and, and show a process and trying to work through like the, uh, a change, it's definitely enhanced the way that we collaborate and communicate with uh, non-technical, non-speaking uh, staff members. Wonderful. So David Sirocco and Walnut have had a long relationship and a very fruitful one. So what's next for Sirocco and Scout at Walnut? What are you thinking? Um, so the big, big buzzword is AI. So there's, there's the AI roadmap. Um, I, can, I can say that probably 70% of our AI roadmap is actually based off Sirocco's recommendations. Um, but with that, there's, 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 there's a concept of value proposition, defining the value. Like, we want to know what is the value of these AI. Um, and with, with the, the capabilities of measuring the, the current state and the future state, we have the ability to, to work on the value proposition because there's a lot of unknowns with, with AI. Um, and the second, to complement that, is a wider adoption of work graph within the organization. Um, the AI is very dependent on the data level. Um, and and we, we are in the process of rolling out data governance and trying to make the data owners and data stewards more accountable. And using the interaction data and work graph is, 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 is a nice mechanism to do that. Oh, wonderful. And um, thank you, David, for flying in, for sharing your insights with, with the group. And guys, the next time you think of a Beyonce concert, think of WorldNet, uh, who's moving all the pieces to make that happen, and think of Scout, which is doing its tiny bit to make that happen as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much, David. Big round of applause, guys. Thanks. David, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.